Okay, so right now we have this beautiful type setting that's all in black, finished in Illustrator. What I'm going to do now is unlock all those type layers, right? Select them all, holding down Shift and Command. Copy them, edit copy. And remember, these are all uh, outlined as vectors now. There's no type left in it. Lock them all. <laughs> Turn them all off. Make a new layer on top. You can see I'm getting lots of layers. This is my 28th. And then edit, paste in place. And now all of that type is just in one layer. Okay. That makes it easier for me, and it's a new layer, to play with coloring it. So it's not just black. And one thing I realized I liked was having these little stars. I'm going to select them with the small selection tool and then hold down Shift and Command to select, uh, maybe just use the lasso to select all of them. And I'm going to change their color. Now, since I have all the gradients and things on the inside image, I'm going to use solids on the outside. That doesn't mean I need to use black. So instead, I want to use a pretty warm maroon. These are the different ways you can select your color. Like that. All right, see how that looks. Looks a little more dangerous, right? Now, what about for the lines themselves? I have so much subtlety in the actual logo. I even put some strokes on it that you can see, like that little purple stroke and the orange stroke for the drop shadow. I have some uh, compliments going in the coloring little things that are a little off <laughs> so that I can tweak once you understand Illustrator. You can make it exactly as you wish it to be. Just taking your time. There's a lot to it. I like that you have the kind of rough uh, texture on the type. I don't love how clean these strokes look, so I'm going to outline these strokes. This is in my copy, so I go to Object, Path, Outline Stroke. Right. So that's one option. And then I could uh, put texture into it, I can make it wavy, I can do all kinds of things. I could also try not using a uniform stroke. I could try making it go thick to thin, but that doesn't look any good. So let's stick with uniform, but instead of a regular line, I could go to these different brushes and I could try a bristle brush. And they're adding to these all the time. And I want something that looks rough. Let's try this one. No, that doesn't work. No. Yeah, I don't like these. Never mind. So instead of that, let's go to basic. I had it at seven. Oh, let's see. They used to have some nicer options here. Let's try artistic. Yes, this is what I'm looking for. Try chalk. Yeah. I don't want it as clean. There we go. That's kind of nice. Maybe a little thinner. It's kind of nice. Now these are still vectors, they're just textured vectors. Illustrator does, has done a lot to kind of build in this capability. And I think the one I liked 
best was actually this one. Yeah, this one. Yeah, this one. All right. But I might have to make it a little bit smaller. So notice your stroke size can can be uh, decimals as well. So you can be really exacting. So I'm going to try 0.75. And then I'm going to rotate it. This is all fine tuning, right? I'm going to rotate it with the large selection tool. And then I'm going to select it and say object path outline stroke. So now it's a shape. It's no longer a stroke. It's a pretty complicated shape, but that allows me to use things like the blob brush to connect it because I don't like that little opening it has. And because it's looser. All of this works. So this is doing all these kind of coloring and specializing within Illustrator. So this is all in the vector. It will be in the EPS file. Yeah. And sometimes this is what I'll do. I'll take my lasso and I'll take a chunk from one place, like this. Copy it, paste it onto a new layer. So edit, paste in place. I messed up with my selection. Darn. To be so exact. Try that again. Copy. Paste in place. Oh, be on the blank layer. Ah, still doing it. Okay, so this is what I'm going to do. Select the whole thing, copy it, turn it off, lock it, go to the new layer, paste in place. Okay, and then in order to even it out a little bit, I'm going to rotate that new layer copy around. So now, it still has those variations. It looks hand done, but not quite so thick to thin as it was before. Okay, then I'm going to select both of those, holding down Shift and Command, copy them, Command C, turn them both off, make a new layer. Edit, paste in place into the new layer. So now all of that is in one layer. And then what I can do is take that path, do the same thing with the charcoal. And then do the same thing with copying it. And pasting it in place. And then rotating it. And being a little faster, not making so many duplicate versions. Yes. All right. And I think that will do it. So now I save that 
as my EPS file. This is my full Forking Bull logo design now. Now it's a combined mark logo because it has hike and an icon. It's not just a logo type and it's not just a, a pictorial logo or an iconic logo. It's a combined mark. And I like it. I think that works pretty well. And then I'm going to take that EPS, make a poster out of it, just like I did before. So, what do I do? I go to Photoshop. I open a new file that's at least 12 inches by 12 inches by 350. It's getting there. Twelve inches by twelve inches by three hundred fifty pixels per inch. RGB color mode, because remember EPS files come in in CMYK. So we need to create an RGB space to find my EPS. Oh, and I did what you guys always do. I didn't save it to the desktop. It's saved, but not to the desktop. So file, save as, make sure you navigate to the desktop. This saved it back into assignment six, which unfortunately overwrote my other assignment six logo. But it's not a big deal because I can just turn off all of this extra stuff if I wanted to get back. But always good to save to the desktop and then organize from there. Okay, now I can bring that in. Here it is. Drag and drop. Keep it right there. Give myself multiple backgrounds just to see what I can do in terms of an offset. So fill this one, edit fill with middle gray. Fill this one, edit fill with black. So I obviously need some sort of offset around the type. And so this is what's interesting. Sometimes I have a white offset built in already to the illustration in Illustrator. And I can turn that on or off. But let's see what happens if I just build a stroke around all of it. That is white. That works pretty well. He already has a little drop shadow within that stroke. See how that looks on a dark color. Yeah. So sometimes that will cause you to go back to your Illustrator file and make adjustments. So one thing I'll often do, turn all this stuff off or unlock all the things you want that you're actually using. Right, select them all, Command and Shift, and move them away from the white artboard and onto the gray background. So you can actually see it all. Illustrator is so picky. Okay, so first I'm just going to use the arrow keys. It'll zoom out a little bit. There we go. Just grab all of it, move it over to the gray. And then I can turn off different features, right? Like I can turn off that orange glow I put on it. 